Young Wolf Media. Hi and welcome to Young Wolf Media. Today we're going to talk about the short history of Concorde. Concorde was one of the first supersonic passenger airlines. The airline flew at twice the speed of sound. What does this mean in real terms? Well, a normal commercial jet took eight hours to fly from New York to Paris. And even today, that's around the average time for the flight. However, the average Concorde flight time between New York and Paris was just under three and a half hours. Among other destinations, Concorde flew to London, Paris, Washington, Virginia, Barbados, and Concorde was able to fly these routes in less than half the time of other airlines. Concorde was set to revolutionise the long haul flight market. However, it failed, as we're going to talk about in this video. Concorde operated from 1976 until 2003. The supersonic plane was developed by a joint venture between British Aircraft Corporation along with their French equivalent. Air France and British Airways were the only two airlines who purchased the Concorde. Concorde in French means harmony, and this was a reflection of the Anglo-French partnership in the building of these planes. The aircraft was mainly used by wealthy passengers who could afford to pay the high price in exchange for the aircraft speed and luxury service. For example, in 1997, the ticket price from New York to London was about $8,000 at the time, which is the equivalent to 12000 in today's money which is more than 30 times the cost of the cheapest option to fly this route. Why did Concorde fail? Many people point to the Concorde airplane crash in 2000 in New York. However, Concorde was failing long before this crash. Concorde was doomed to fail from the very start for economic reasons. The original program cost an estimated £70 million. However, with the huge overruns and delays, the program eventually cost £1.3 billion. And this was the reason that they were doomed to fail from the very start. The cost of building the planes meant that it, only two airlines, Air France and British Airways, could afford to operate them. And this in turn meant that the cost of building the airplanes increased because there were only two airlines buying them. Originally, Concorde had hoped to sell planes to airlines across the world, such as Lufthansa, American Airlines, United Airlines, Air India, Air Canada, Singapore Airlines and Middle East Airlines and originally there was a great deal of interest from the airlines that I've just named but as talked about due to the cost of the planes the airlines couldn't afford to buy them as they were uneconomical. Now this could have been a case of chicken or the egg. If the other airlines had bought more Concords, Concord would have maybe gotten economics of scale uh, and if you don't know what economics of scale is I'll give you um, an easy example. If you look at the first cell phone, it cost about $4,000, and today you can buy a smartphone with all the features for about $50. And this is economical scales. The more people buy it, the cheaper it becomes, because it's cheaper to make. And of course, fancies in technology will also make things cheaper. And this was one of the major problems for Concorde. At the time the airplane was built, the technology simply wasn't there. To put it into another perspective, the first personal computer built for a mass market, wasn't released until one year before the Concorde had first came out, in 1975. As talked about earlier, the cost of building the plane was simply uneconomical. The cost per unit cost was impossible to recoup, so the French and British governments absorbed the development costs. Now, funnily enough, British Airways and Air France were able to operate the Concorde at a profit, in spite of the high maintenance costs, because the aircraft was able to save the cost because, as I talked about earlier, ticket prices for Concorde were so expensive. And this shows, once again, that from the very start, Concorde was never economically viable in a free market. Of course, there were lots of other costs in operating the Concorde, such as the use more fuel than normal. There was less lease on the Concorde, which meant you had to charge more per seat than a normal average airline would. And also the fact that the operating costs for running the plane were more than a normal plane as well. What does the future hold for supersonic passenger airplanes, you may be thinking? Well, now we do have the technology to make this economically viable. The last regular supersonic airplane for passengers was in 2003, over 16 years ago. However, there are talks of boom technology creating a supersonic plane that has already had 30 aircraft pre-ordered by Japan Airlines and the Virgin Group. However, commercialization for these services won't be available until the mid-2020s. 
so we'll just have to wait and see what happens. Thanks for watching and please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time.